Here are the questions that I'm going to do today. This is an introduction to modular arithmetic. If you click on question 5 or 6 at any time, it'll take you through to my video Modular Inverse Made Easy, which has more details. If you click on question 7 at any time, it'll take you through to my video Modular Exponentiation Made Easy. And if you click on question 8, it'll take you through to Chinese Remainder Theorem Made Easy. If you're, you have a question that involves public key encryption or RSA code, that's well beyond what we'll do in this video. You can have a look at my video, RSA Code Made Easy. Now in question one, you can see here this mod three. This is also known as modulo three. And the key idea when you see mod or modulo is to think remainders. So if we're dealing in modulo three or mod three, when we see a five, we think two because five divided by three gives a remainder of two. The remainder when we divide 10 by three is one. So when we see 10, we think one. And you can see some other examples here. In terms of notation, uh, I've put here two uh, styles of notation that I think will be acceptable to any examiner. So the first is that we would say that five is equivalent to two bracket mod three close bracket. You can see here I've used the three lined equivalent sign rather than equals. Or the other way that you can do it is you can say five mod three without any brackets is equal to two mod three. Okay, so in question one, if we follow what I've said so far, when we see one, two, three, four, we want to think what's the remainder when we divide by 3. And we know that, or we can work out that 1, 2, 3, 4 is 411 times 3 plus 1. So the remainder is 1. So the answer is that x equals 1. When we go to question 2, we see that we can apply everything the same in the same way for negative numbers. So this time we're dealing mod 5. So negative 27 is equal to negative 6 times 5 plus 3. And we then say that that's equivalent to 3 mod 5. The purpose of question 3 is to give you a problem that will be too hard to work out in the simple way on a normal calculator and that you're going to have to use some techniques. So you can see the two numbers that are to be multiplied together and the first thing I can say is that it's equal to 999, 999 minus 1 times 999, 99 minus 5. And the reason I do that is that then when I go to the next line, I know that these numbers that contain all the 9s are divisible by 9. So modulo 9, they're equal to 0. So I can just replace them with a 0. So now I've got it's equivalent to 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 5. And that equals, uh, sorry, it's equivalent to 5 mod 9. The next question asks us to construct a multiplication table for modulo 3. So in modulo 3 the only remainders we've got is 0, 1 and 2. So I've constructed a table here with 0, 1 and 2 horizontally and vertically. When I multiply them together as I would if I was in primary school this is what I'd get here. And the only real problem is that 2 times 2 gives us 4 but, in f but 4 isn't really in modulo 3. We would use the lowest well, we would use the remainder when we divide by 4, and that's 1. So the final answer would be here, with the 1 down the bottom right-hand corner. OK, on to the next question, which is this important area of inverse. So what does it mean to have an inverse? It means that when we multiply whatever it is by 6, we'll get 1 when we're dealing modulo 13. So you can see here the calculations, for example, 6 times 4 is 24, and 24 mod 13 is equal to 11 mod 13. So I just go down all the possibilities one by one, and I finally end up with um, seeing that 6 times 11, down the bottom here, is 66, and mod 13, that is equal to 1 mod 13. So the answer is 11. The next question uh, is asking us to find the inverse. It's just a different way of requesting that you work out the inverse. 
And this time I've been a little bit lazy with the notation. Uh, most examiners would accept this, uh, but you'll know from whether your examiner will accept this. So I've just said working modulo 9 throughout, we have, and now I just use equal signs. And you can see as I go through all the possibilities of multiplying numbers by 6 to, get, to try and get 1, that there is no 1. Um, I can't get 1 by multiplying 6 by anything, so there is no solution. Okay, on to doing some big powers in modulo arithmetic. So the first thing that I must say is that generally I've been saying you can replace numbers by their modulo, but with powers you can't. You can't replace this 100 by 1. Uh, the 100 is really a, an operation. It's saying multiply a number by itself eight to, uh, 100 times. So that doesn't change. But as per usual, we can replace the 8 by negative 1. And once we've got negative 1 to the 100, it's obvious that the answer is 1. And then the final question where we're asked to solve two simultaneous equations in modular arithmetic. One's in mod 2, one's in mod 3. And so what I've done is I've used trial and error as requested and just started to go through and from 1 and just worked my way up. So we see that 1 is equivalent to 1 mod 3, but we're looking for something that's equivalent to 2 mod 3. So clearly x cannot be equal to 1. And then we go through and finally we get to 5 and we see that 5 is in fact equivalent to 1 mod 2 and 2 mod 3. So an a solution to the problem is that x equals 5. And that's it for modular arithmetic. I hope you found it useful.